Got me a box of things from the OGX store. Uh, let's see what's inside. And I purchased all of these things. So don't go thinking I get things for free. Because I don't. But if you want to send me things for free, go right ahead. Just so you know, every since it's OGX store, everything here I purchased is for the OGX box. Ah, these are what I'm looking for. But I also got these, which everything you can get. Uh, 80 pin ID cables. What else we got? We got some open Xeniums, which I will also need today. more Xeniums, more cables. Cool. So I want to take a look at, keep these two aside. I want to take a look at this guy today. You may be asking yourself, what the hell is this? It's called the XRTC. And all it is, is essentially a supplemental real-time clock for the OG Xbox. So if you've done OG Xbox stuff, you know that the clock cap goes bad and you remove it essentially when you remove it there is no way for the console to keep track of your clock or your date and time so what a lot of people do is you connect it to the interwebs uh, using the ethernet cable and it kind of syncs your time but obviously if you turn it off turn it on you remove the ethernet you're going to lose your uh date and time some people don't care some might this little guy right here is a qsb that comes with a battery and you solder it up and once you sync your time, your time stays. I've never installed one of these before, um, but they do come with, come for the 1.0 to 1.4 and the 1.6 consoles. I'll leave a link to everything down below. If you buy them from the OGX store, which is where they originate from, they cost between 12 and 15 bucks. So it's 15 bucks for the 1.6, $12, $13 actually, I think for the 1.0 to 1.4. So this is for the 1.0 and 1.4. So essentially, you install your QSB, solder your battery here. So positive, negative, ground, give this sucker a three volt. Uh, your SD and SCL are also here in case if you need it. And we should get time. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna put this sucker in a 1.0 board I have and we'll see how it works. Victim of choice today this 1.2 board that I upgraded to a 1 gigahertz console a while back so yeah let's do the thing. And while we do that I would like to thank today's sponsor PCBWay. Calling all innovators and creators it's time to showcase your skills with PCBWay's seventh project design contest. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, engineer, or a maker this contest is the perfect chance to share your designs with the world. Submit your best PCB or mechanical design and stand a chance to win amazing prizes, such as cash rewards and gain international recognition. Ready to get started? Visit PCBWay.com and click on the PCB 7th Project Design Contest banner and enter the contest today. Alright, so this is the area we're looking at. So it's the bottom, basically where the LPC header is that you would use to install a mod chip. So I already have an open Xenium installed. Once again, you can get yours from OGXStore.com. Um, this is where the XRTC goes. So essentially it sits in here and it fits in like so. So it's these three points that you need to solder to. Your ground is over here. Um, and then your three volts you're going to get from C8P2. So I'm going to just have to reconfigure my uh, DO wire that's up there, my Xenium. So that's fine. So. All we gotta do is go like so. And it fits very snug, so basically like that. Got it all lined up. And it's as simple as soldering three little points. I'm just gonna take a little bit of flux and apply it there and tack it down. Thank you. 
Now that we have that done, like I mentioned, this big old square plane is for our ground, so I'm just gonna ground it up. And then all we need is our 3v3, which is this point here. We're just gonna run a wire from here to here. And there you have it. Basically from here, what you want to do next is, this is the battery that comes supplied and it comes supplied with uh, some sticky tape on the side. So I'm going to mount mine on top, but you basically mount it and then you would measure your wire, cut your wire, and you would solder each of them to one of these points. So your positive and your negative. So in this case, we would solder our red to the positive and our black to the negative and that'd be it so let's i guess do that now okay so we got our wires trimmed uh once again red to positive black to negative so like just like that i'm gonna keep my wires long because you probably can mount this anywhere close on the board um i'll show you potentially where may be the most ideal spot if you aren't running a mod chip or if you aren't running a mod chip uh with a nice 3d printed bracket like i am cool and that's basically it for the, the entire trip so it's done um it looks like ideally you could mount the chip if you wanted to in this area where an open xenium is you could probably stick it to the bottom of the chip you aren't using a holder or whatever uh in my case i have this nice 3d printed bracket that you can print from thingiverse and the issue with mine is it's the entire um it's the entire area so if we can get it there you go as you see there it covers the entire bottom so it doesn't move at all um so there's quite literally no place for me to mount it there um so i'm gonna leave it long i think the second place you can probably mount it is on the side shelf like whoop. i think been the case so that's probably what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna just leave it hanging here uh we'll clean up we'll put it back on the board and we'll come back to finish off on the software side because there is a few configurations that you need to make for this guy to work properly console all put back together and this is going to be my placement of choice right over here by the id cable seems like uh the best spot since my Xenium, so I could honestly place it like right here and we'd be good to go. So that's what I'm gonna do. So once again, if you have a different mod chip, uh, you can place this right here under the mod chip, on top of the mod chip, honestly, if you wanted to, but I'm gonna keep it there. Next up, I'm just gonna put this console all back together and we'll come back uh, when it's done. Okay, so when it comes to the software side, there's a few things you actually need to do. Depending on your setup, um, this can go one of two ways. So there are obviously two options um, to get this guy going. One option is to use uh, Prometheo, Promethe OS on any mod chip, so Open Xenium, X3, Aladdin, etc. The second option is to use SurBIOS, and in this case, you'll need SurBIOS 2.4.0, so you can just flash your TSOP. So let's say if you didn't want to use a mod chip. If you are using SurBIOS 2.4 or higher, in my case, I am using 2.4.2, as you see here. This is downloaded from Pandora. I'll leave a link. You should know where to get it. You can get it from usual sources also. Um, this is the setup of it. So it'll come with Sir BIOS Hybrid 2.4.2 Beta, which you can flash to a mod chip, TSOP, whatever. There'll be a folder that'll contain your boot uh, animations and it'll have a Sir BIOS configuration setting file. I just renamed mine to C drive root to remind myself that these, this folder and this file needs to go into the root of your C drive. 
whether you use FTP, USB, whatever. And if you open up the servbios.ini, there'll be a setting that's set to false, which is enable automatic time sync with optional RTC hardware connected to the SM bus. You just need to enable equals true, save that, put that in your C drive. The second thing you'll need to do is if you visit the GitHub page of and Andrew Zero, Andro, um, there's an xrtc.xbe file. You'll need to download said file and also FTP it to wherever you put your apps. So in my case, it's, I believe, e slash apps. And then we'll come back once we get the console booted up. And once we're in the dashboard, so I'm using XBMC for gamers, I'll head over to applications and there should be a XRTC and we'll just launch that. And once we're here, all we need to do is go into RTC expansion and set our day of the week. So I already have it set, but if you did be day of the week, day, month, year, hour, 24 hour format so it's 222 here and then we would hit reboot and that would save our settings and once the console reboots I'm going to just unplug my ethernet to show you guys that it isn't saved on the net and actually before I power it on again I'm gonna power it off unplug give it a second so that way if anything was synced via the network, it is now, it would now theoretically be wiped out. When we boot, we'll just boot back Serbios. And if we select P, we will see that our time stayed sync. So 2.24 PM network is busy showing that it's not connected to the internet. If we go to settings, appearance, international, you'll see that our time is set 2.24 Sunday, September 15th. And that's it. That's all you need to do if you're running Sir BIOS version 2.4 or higher using TSOP or some other mod chip. Another option you can go is if you are using Prometheus. So if you're using that on a Xenium, Aladdin, uh, Executor 3, there are many chips that supported. If you're using that, there's also a different route you can go. So I am using it on an open Xenium, which makes it kind of an easier step. Um, as of right now, this is manual, so there is no um, internet related option here. If we go into system, system info and console, you will see here that it has RTC expansion detected. So if you do solder it and you have a Prometheus OS chip, easy way to see if it's um, working or not. If we back out and we go into system system info sorry if we go into settings prometheos general options miscellaneous options you see here that we have rtc enabled currently set to no i'll change that value to yes and i'll back out and then if we go into settings rtc expansion we can set our date and time here. So you would set your day of the week. 
day, month, year, hour, minutes. And this is in 12 hour, 24 hour format. So one would be 13. And then let's say I actually, let's try it out. So if I set it to, you see it updated to nine. So if I back it up into eight, then I hit back. If we launch Sir BIOS once again, and we boot into XBMC for gamers, it should have that time. And if we select P, we will see up top that it's 12.09 PM. And if we look here, we see that there is no network connection because it says busy. If we go into settings, <clears throat> we will see under the appearance that it should have all of that set. Well, there we go. 12.09 p.m. Sunday, September 15th. So it does indeed work that way. There is right now only a manual setting as you saw to set your date and time, but hopefully an upcoming update at some point that'll be set via network and you won't have to do it manually. So those are the two options right now. As of September 2024, there is no other support. Like if you're using a Project Stellar or that, that's not really an option right now, but hopefully in the future that will change. Um, but yeah, that's a quick video of using the XRTC. Not too bad to install, not too bad to set up. Um, I did forget to mention that other than purchasing it, I'll leave a link to the GitHub down below. You can use that to create your own uh, PCBs. There's a Gerber and the bill of materials, so you can use that to source and create your own if you want to. If you don't want to purchase it, it may be cheaper that way, it may not, I don't know. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe. That's always useful. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.